Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove multiple records from a gallery in Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, SharePoint Teams videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. So let's get into the video. So I will be continuing to work with the grid like Excel uh, gallery I'm created in Power Apps. If you haven't seen that video and want to recreate something like that, Feel free to check out my previous video, but I want to remove multiple records in this Power App. So I want to add a checkbox to each of these rows to where a user will click on the checkbox and then I'll have a button at the top that says remove records. So I'll just show you guys how to do that. All right, so I need to create room on the left-hand side for the checkbox. So let's go ahead and go into the gallery and insert a checkbox. So we got the gallery, checkbox. So we now have a checkbox within the gallery. So now I need to remove the first name field over just a little bit so we can have the checkbox on the left hand most side. Let's go to first name and let's check out what the X property is. So it's zero right now, let's change this to 40. And as you can see, it kind of overlaps the last name now. So we want to shift all this stuff over. So let's go to the first name, label first name. And let's set this one to 40. And let's go back to our text input first name box. And let's just set the X property to the label. So it always follows that now. So it's always going to be underneath the uh, first name. So if I switch the label first name to zero, it should snap back into place. And all the other input boxes are relying on the previous one. So that's why they all move together. So if I go to the last name and go to the X property, it's looking at the label first name dot X plus label first name dot width. So it's going to be right after the, the text input. So let's go ahead and move that label back to 40 and everything else moved over. Uh, as you can see, the start date over here on the left hand most side is going off the screen now. So we need to fix that. So let's make that box a little bit smaller because it doesn't need to be that big. Let's go to the width because we want to do the width. So right now it is label start date dot width minus 10. And the minus 10 is because it has a scroll bar on it. So let's go to the label start date because we need to adjust that value. Uh, we need to go to the width. So it's parent.width times 0.2. So it's going to take up 20% uh, of the total screen. So let's go ahead and put this in parentheses and then just subtract the 40 from the right hand most side. So now it's actually on the screen and uh, the scroll bar is showing and everything. So it looks pretty clean. Now we can start working on the checkbox. So let's go ahead and move this all the way over to zero. So that looks about right. Uh, we don't need any X associated with this. So let's go to the text property, uh, remove the option, just make that blank. And we can move, make the width only 40. So now it fits in the box. And let's go ahead and just make the height match the gallery template height. So I'd go to the height of the checkbox. And I just want to make a gallery two dot template height. So it's aligned with all the other rows and it looks like the Y value is off. So the Y value looks like it's starting at like 20 or something. So let's go to the Y property. It's actually at 15, change that to zero. So now it fits within that row and let's go ahead and put a border on the checkbox. The border will set this to two. So now it has a border around it as well. So it looks pretty nice. I can go ahead and click on these and uh, I can unclick them. Okay, so that UI looks pretty nice. And let's go ahead and add the remove button to the top bar. I have a few other buttons. You don't need all these buttons, but they're just to like, show you different things you can add or have for the users to use. So let's go, just go ahead and add another button. And I'll put this over here and let's just go ahead and change the color of this one to make it stand out. Uh, definitely not doing yellow. Uh, 
Two yellow with black font. That looks better. Okay. So let's go ahead and change the text to remove. And right now the on select property doesn't have anything associated with it, it just falls. So no, nothing's going to happen. So it's pretty much like the same thing I want to do with the submit. So here's my submit. It's patching all these different records. So if I change one of these rows, if I change multiple uh, rows actually, it's going to patch all those rows to the updated information. So I can pretty much take this formula, switch out the toggle with the checkbox. So if the checkbox is equal to true, I want to remove the record. So it's a for all statement and I'm just filtering the gallery two items where the checkbox is equal to true and I'm going to remove the records. So I'm just going to copy this and work with this. And that's for my previous video of updating all the record values in the gallery. Let's go ahead and Filter gallery two items. Let's switch this to checkbox three dot value. So if the checkbox three dot value is equal to true, so if it's checked, we want to remove SharePoint list I'm working with is the employee data. And I want to remove this item. So the item that is selected. So it looks like it is actually this record instead of this item. And that's probably because I'm not within the gallery, so I can't use this item. It's gotta be this record. So let me go ahead and change this bun to bun delete. All right, so the final formula for all, I'm filtering the gallery two dot all items. So it's getting all the items in the gallery. I'm filtering it where the checkbox is equal to true. So if it's checked and then I wanna remove the record from employee data, which is currently selected, and that will be uh, everyone that is selected for the checkbox. Let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and remove Joey, Mark, and Alexa. Hopefully my Alexa didn't hear that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and click on remove. So it does its update, and as you can see, we actually removed those three records. Uh, I'm going to pull up the SharePoint right now so we can check the records were actually removed on the back end. All right, I'm in my marketing SharePoint. Let's go to employee data. Take off the group by filter and those three records appear to be missing, which AKA they were deleted. So that's how you actually remove multiple records. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's just pretty neat. Uh, you can also, if you want to do a trash can icon, you can do a trash can icon and just have the on select property equal to removing this item. But I like, I feel like this looks a little bit better if you can select multiple records and remove, but it all depends on your use case. Uh, do whatever you, uh, you feel is better for the users, but this way is pretty, pretty nice. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments down below and I will catch you in the next video.